Hey folks, back again with a quick update on progress for the 2D Trust Analysis Toolbox. So here we are uh, on the right hand side of your screen, of my screen, you can see uh, one of the test questions from the 2D Trust Analysis course. Um, and then on the left obviously is uh, Degree Tutors Labs. So we've got all of our courses as usual on, on the on the main page. So last week we, uh, we took a look at the progress that I had made in terms of implementing uh, our 2D Trust Analysis Toolbox. And so this week I basically just want to show you where the sort of the developments that I've made and um, so it's a little bit more impressive looking this week versus versus the last video um, where I went over it so we'll just head over to the structure work section and we'll go into our toolbox and so the first big change that you can see the first big update is that we now have this area here so last week uh, basically this is what we had right so we just had the data input and I demonstrated putting in the date that defines this structure over here on the right demonstrator putting that into here hitting solve and, and obviously the solver does work it's it's finished from that point of view and now it's about trying to make it a, a more pleasing experience or useful experience on the front end so since last week we now have this so this is essentially a, a it's a 3D window essentially that you can use to view your structure and and at this stage some of your results but ultimately you'll be able to view all of the results in here. So let me just go ahead and demonstrate it. Um, <clears throat> so let me see. I want to get the uh, the data for this structure on the right now. I conveniently kind of have that all copied into a or, or or written into an Excel sheet here so it makes it really easy to just copy and paste it in but if I go ahead and just copy in let's say a couple of uh, a couple of the nodes here so what we have here is the node ID if you don't remember from the last video the node ID the X coordinate and the Y coordinate of the node so I'm just going to come in and drop these in here and as we drop them in you can see well two nodes appear up in our up in our view here and this is a fully 3d view so you can click and drag and uh, you can sort of reorientate yourself using the uh, the view cube up in the top right um, or the, the sort of gizmo down here on the bottom left. So if you hit Z there, you can go back into front view. So anyway, that's, you know, it's a fairly standard and intuitive 3D view. So let me just bring in all of the nodes here for this structure. So I'll just uh, paste them in here. That's again, I said this the last time, but that's the, the e currently the easiest way to get data into this is to uh, literally write it out in a in an Excel sheet here and just copy and paste it in. So there we have all of our nodes for our structure. And of course, if we go ahead and uh, we can zoom in and out uh, with the scroll wheel, but if we go ahead and delete any of these, um, our 3D view will update straight away. It updates automatically. Um, so that's our nodes in. Now we can bring in our members. So I'm just going to bring them all in at once. You can bring them in one by one or drop them all in. And we have our view of our structure. So depending on how familiar you are with uh, 3D uh, software or 3D visualization, uh, you, you might know the difference between a, an orthographic view and a perspective view. So because this is a 2D structural analysis that we're doing, I've opted for an orthographic view here. So what you're seeing here is not a, a, a true 3D perspective or a, a true perspective, um, a true perspective perspective. It's, a, it's an orthographic perspective that's even more confusing it's an orthographic view okay um so it doesn't represent accurate 3d perspective how things further away are smaller and things closer to the camera are bigger um but i think that's suitable for the type of analysis we're doing a 2d trust analysis here so anyway enough about that so that's basically the the structure you can sort of you can zoom in you can zoom back out you can you know visualize the structure um so that's the 3d view now this is it's it's nice to see here you know it sort of bears a strong resemblance to this over here so when i was building out the type of the type of elements and what they should look like um for want of any better um inspiration i basically just use the same sort of modeling the same type of uh, structural elements the same look and feel uh, as these models over here um so basically that's what we've got we've got this guy represented over here now we have supports as well so if we go ahead and we uh, put our supports in here let's just drop those in we can see we have our supports updating on our model as well and they those supports so you have a roller on the right pin on the left they're going to update based on what restraints i have so if i change let me see if i swap this this on the right hand side from being a roller a horizontal roller if i make it a vertical roller by making that true well first of all to make that true it turns into a pin you can see you'd see that change if i was able to scroll up um, as i was typing it but only so much will fit on the screen and if i now make that 
false, right? So the, there is no restraint in the y direction. Think about what we expect to see. We expect to see the roller in a horizontal orientation and sure enough that's what we that's what we get so your supports will update based on whatever restraint we specify down here so let's actually go back and uh, the quickest way to go back is to just copy and paste in again okay and then we have our forces so our forces again we can just drop these guys in uh, and I've added one extra force. I've added a horizontal force on node seven here that isn't in the uh, isn't in the Jupyter notebook over here. And um, just because I, I think I was what was I doing? I was debugging something or something, and I put an extra force in there. But anyway, we can see now that we have our forces represented on our structure. So straight away we have a nice visual representation of the structure that we're trying to solve. Um, and you know that's usually the quickest way to find out if you've done anything wrong um, in terms of your data entry is to is to see if it looks correct on your 3D model. And so we have that now. So that's kind of handy. I was pretty happy with that. That came together, um, well, you saw where I was last week. So that came together fairly quickly. I was I was pretty surprised. Um, for anyone who's sort of techy and interested in how this is achieved, this is done, it uses, a, this is a WebGL canvas. And it uses a, uh, in order to do this, I use a JavaScript package called 3JS. Um, and a this whole site is a React a React site, uh, and so I use a, a package called React Three Fiber uh, to take Three JS and use it within a React environment. Again, if you're just an engineer and you're watching this from an engineer's point, structural engineer's point of view, you don't care about that. But if there's any sort of techie folks out there, um, web dev people like myself, um, you might be interested in that. Uh, so what else? Oh yeah, I've got this button here, so we can hit wire and we can see a wireframe view. So that's that can be handy. And um, so what you can flick between wire and structure. I haven't wired up this example button here yet because what I want to do there is for you to be able to hit that button for new people coming to this that haven't used this before. I want them to be able to hit that button and essentially present a sample analysis. So probably this structure or another structure, or I might cycle between some random structures that I have hard coded into the uh, into the website and it will it will sort of put a model on screen put the associated data down here and actually solve the model as well just to give people a starting point who don't know how to use it um okay so that's that's so far um there's a little bit more so i've that's your 3d model and uh, what else have i got if we now solve the model so we'll hit solve there job submitted successfully and then we get our analysis report back so we've our analysis report you saw all this in the last video so we've got our reactions and uh, we've got our axial forces and we've got our nodal displacements so i've got some of these results updating so straight away up here you can see you've more buttons now so now we have our reactions button axial forces axial stresses and deflection now i haven't wired up axial forces and axial stresses yet I'm still working on the best way on implementing that what I think is the best way to visualize those um, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to implement a color map uh, for different uh, magnitudes of axial force and so we're not there yet I'm still sort of battling with some of the uh, the code uh, to implement that but what I do have is deflections for example so we can hit deflection and then we get the slider comes up now naturally enough your deflections are usually tiny by comparison to the scale of your structure so you can't see them so you got to scale them up and so any structural analysis software will have this ability to scale up your deflections and so this is this is no different so we can see our deflection becomes a bit clearer if we switch over to wire mode so now we can see the original structure in its original position in red and then our scaled up deflections in this case scaled by a factor of 700 just so we can see them um and so you know that's a, a helpful little a little tool to be able to visualize your deflected shape now in due course i'll i'll implement the ability for you to either click on or hover over different uh, nodes here and you'll get a little tooltip that says you know this is node x and its horizontal deflection is this and its vertical deflection is that so that'll be helpful as well I, I'm, I haven't done that yet but i don't expect famous last words but i don't expect that to be too difficult and um, so i'll implement that soon enough so there's your there's your deflected shape and you can sort of bring it back down again uh, and you can of course turn the deflected shape off hide deflection um, bring our structure back and let's look at our reactions so I've got reactions as well so we're visualizing reactions in this uh, this green color which I seem to use everywhere so we've got um, vertical reactions and of course a horizontal reaction here on the left because that's a pin um, and applied forces the convention I think I'm going with it seems to be is that applied forces are going to be in blue and reactions are going to be in green 
so that is uh that's so far that's as far as we've gotten um at this point uh like i say next steps are going to be implementing or wiring up this axial forces like we've all the axial forces calculated all i need to do now is implement a way of intuitively visualizing them on the structure and as i said i'm trying to work my way through building out um, a color map uh, a way to uh, visualize the load intensity through color uh, on the structure again if you've used you know any structural analysis software you'll be familiar with that idea so that's where we're at and um, you can uh, you can come in here and obviously you know this all up this model here updates live that the solution doesn't update live you've got to hit solve down here to get a new solution but the actual model itself if i go and let me see hide reactions in the front view and let's say i deleted node 3 just to demonstrate that it updates let's go ahead and delete that guy you can see well part of the model uh, gets deleted so it updates nice and quickly um which i was pretty happy about so i think i think that's about all i have to update you on uh this week as i said i'll likely come back i'll make another update when there's something to update you with i'm making fairly quick progress at the minute so i'm hoping within the next week or so i'll be able to come back with another update and show you axial forces and axial stresses um, and i'm hoping i'm hoping now touch wood with a little bit of luck um, I'll be able to get this out and available and released for members uh, in the first instance within the next couple of weeks for the all access members over on degree tutors obviously those folks you folks um, depending on who, who you are watching this will be able to uh, get access to that straight away um, and thereafter I, again I haven't quite finalized the details about what access will be but there will be a version of this available um, to uh, all users of the degree tutors website probably some restrictions or something on it and I'm playing around with a couple of other really I think are great ideas around um, like when we have all these solvers we can start doing things like challenges on the website so like I pose a, a challenge like uh, you know your, your standard or typical bridge building challenge um, you know a gap that must be spanned and you're able to go and you know uh, produce solutions using uh, these tools and submit your solutions and we can have competitions based on uh, best strength to weight ratio all that good stuff so there's lots of really cool I think cool things that we can do once we have all these tools to play with on the website as you know this is just one of many many solvers that will uh, will eventually be implemented quite a lot will be implemented over the course of 2022 but this one is going to see the light of day now within the next couple of weeks. So I mentioned membership there. Just I'll just do a little uh, a soft plug at the end here. Um, if you're watching this, this video is primarily um, being produced for uh, all access members. But if you happen to be watching this, if I post it on Twitter or YouTube, I, I almost certainly will. Um, and you're not a member and you want to become a member uh, just very quickly i don't think i i mentioned this at the end of the last video but if you become a member you basically get access to all degree tutors courses so if i go back over to my courses page we have all of our current courses pretty packed schedule of course production for 2022 as well i've got a, a lot in there that i'm planning to put out and um, you get access to all these courses if you become a member and of course you get access uh, first access and unlimited access to all the solvers that i build and implement within uh, within degree tutors uh, labs here so if you want to become a member head over to degree tutors website go to the membership page i've got buttons for membership all over the website so you shouldn't find it too hard to navigate your way to this page and you can go and join up for the year and get access as i say to everything so that's if you're watching this and you're not a member all right that's it um more work ahead i'll leave it there for now and uh continue plugging away on at this for the afternoon and um i will see you in the next update all the best